Now what we are going to do is uh, give the user or a user the ability to sign in um, to their account. Um, we've already uh, allowed a user to register, which generated a hash for their password and a salt value. And we can now utilize them to allow them to actually sign in, uh, set a session to signify that they're sign it, signed in. Um, and then in another part, we're going to look at actually the, the remember me functionality. So the ability to remember this user um, so the first thing that really we want to do is, is outline the form that we're going to create, uh, which is going to allow them to enter the credentials they need to sign in. So we have an action and a method here. The method's going to be post, uh, and the action is just going to be blank. So we submit back to this page. Now we're going to do similar. Um, we're going to create similar markup to what that we did with for the registration. So we're going to have a label for a particular field or a particular ID. Um, this is going to be for username. Uh, we'll just end that label field, and we'll say username, and um, we will create an input field, and we'll be validating these as well. Um, so. So an ID of username, and we'll set autocomplete to off as well. So we're going to get a long list of uh, values. So that's the username, um, and we'll also obviously need to give the uh, ability to supply the password. So let's just go ahead and change these field names or these attribute values. Okay, so um, we're obviously going to need a, a login button. So it'll just be a submit button with the value of login. Um, and additionally, we've already looked at token generation for cross-site request forgery. Uh, it's not massively um, important to include it here, but let's go ahead and do this anyway. Um, just set a token. Uh, just makes it a lot, a lot more consistent. So the value here is basically just going to be echo token generate so we can generate a token there okay so now what we're going to do is um, we'll open and close PHP tags at the top so we can perform a variety of checks obviously the first thing that we need to do is require in the initialization file that we've already created and we already know um, the first thing to do then is check whether input it actually exists or not so whether the form's been submitted Let's just go ahead and test this out so we know that it works. So we'll go ahead, open the browser, hit enter. We've got these two fields and we can click log in and we get the test message. So we now know that uh, everything is working in that sense. Um, we obviously need to go ahead and check that the token um, is correct and has been supplied as per the form. So we will supply the token using the, uh, the input helper. Okay, so now we wanna go and validate Again, we don't really need to go over this uh, too much because we've already um, we've already looked at this functionality, so it doesn't really matter too much. So validation is equal to validate, and we're checking. Oops, we're checking. So we have an array of values that we want to check. Simply username, which is going to be an array of of uh, sort of defined rules and uh, the password similarly. Now all we're going to do here is just require both of them um, we, or set both of them to be required. Uh, we're not going to do too much else here. We, we could check lengths and things like that but uh, for the purpose of this let's just leave these to both be required. Um, so we need to check if the validation passes. So if validation passed uh, we need to uh, log user in. Otherwise, uh, we want to go ahead and for each of the errors, so for each validation errors as error, that's a method, so that only brackets, uh, we're just going to go ahead and echo out the error and append on a break. So a little messy, but it uh, doesn't really matter too much. So in here now, uh, let's go ahead and hit, hit log in. Oh, nothing's happening, so let's just double check what's happening. Username and password. Ah, yes, of course, we didn't uh, supply the set of data that we want to check against. So um, when we hit login now, username is required. If I was to type in a username and a password and, and hit login, this would work now. 
And I've also obviously noticed that the type here needs to be password just to conceal uh, that entry on our form. So um, now what we actually need to do is log the user in. So we've completed our validation and all the boring things. Uh, now what we want to do is, um, yeah, actually log the user in. And uh, we're not going to include the ability to remember the user just yet. We'll go back and retrofit that in a bit later. Um, but the first thing we want to do is instantiate a new user object so we can make use of the methods that we have here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to process a login by creating a login variable utilizing the user object and the login method and passing through input get username and input get password so we're passing them through what we then want to do is check if the login was successful and then echo success that's all we'll be doing for now, um, and then we can we can just do a little investigation and see whether we've actually logged in. Um, I guess otherwise we would uh, echo something like, "Sorry, um, logging in failed." Just you know anything like that doesn't really matter. Um, so at the moment we obviously don't have the um, the the method of the. Uh, login method available to us so this will error um, so we need to go ahead and build the login method in our user object so let's go ahead or user class rather so let's go and do that so public function login we need a username and a password to be uh, passed to this and uh, let's take a look at what we act or have a think about what we need to do so the first thing we want to do is check whether the username and password has been supplied to this method um, so let's go ahead and set these to null by default so if the let's just say we'll do this in sort of what we're what we're basically going to be doing is um, using this login functionality um, to uh, a bit later on um, check whether um, we haven't supplied a username and a password and in that case we're going to automatically sign a user in based on um, their the ID that's already been stored in the session so I think I guess let's leave this for now and just focus on uh, actually logging the user in so what we're going to do is we're first of all going to check if the user actually exists or not um, but if anything else happens we're going to return false we don't really need to um, well in that case our if statement will just be be rendered false so um, if we create a variable called user and say equals this find username so by doing that we've assumed now that we have a method in our uh, in our class called find so we need to create this so we're breaking this up into functionality that we can reuse elsewhere so in we're, we're not sort of tied down to um, you know every all of the functionality inside of this login um, so we obviously need a username passed in here or user. I'm just gonna say null um, and the reason we're doing this is saying user is because we're in this case we're going to say we want to also use this method to find a user by its ID or their their ID rather uh, not just their username. So what we can do here is just say if user um, we're going to say field equals is numeric um, user. So if this is numeric, we are going to say that we want the field to be ID. Otherwise, we want the field to be username. Now, the only consideration here is, are we allowing users to register with numeric usernames? At the moment, we are. So we, you know, if, if you want to sort of get around this, um, you'd have to go back to your validation class and uh, define the ability to only allow, say, uh, alphanumeric uh, usernames or something like that. So in this case, um, this would uh, this would fail on users having only numbers for usernames. So that's just something to think about as well. Um, perhaps a task just to go away and retrofit, change your validation class just to make it a bit more uh, bulletproof. So data um, is going to represent the data that we get back from the table. So we're going to say this db 
get, and you probably guess we're going to get from the users table, and we're going to say where the field, so the field that we've just selected, either ID or username, is equal to user. So what we're now doing is we are grabbing the data from the database so we can use the methods that we're used to from our database wrapper so we can say data count, uh, data count. Um, now what we're going to do is this will mean that the user does exist so we are going to return true we're also going to store the user data so we need somewhere to do that so let's create a new uh, property called data and let's come down here and say this data equals data first so we're taking the first and only result in this case so now the data um, the data property here will contain all of the user's data so in this case what we could then do is check if the user exists so user if we print our on user this will now contain all of the user's information. So when we do, uh, when we when we perform a login now, um, we should see an array of data. So if I type in Alex and password, click login. Um, one we have here. So let's check what's happened. Ah, of course. Um, I think we have no users in our database. Oh no, we do. Okay. Um, let's just take a look here. So we are returning true uh, this fine. Oh, sorry, of course, um, we need to say this data because this actually returns true rather than actually returning that. And we can pop a return false on that. So um, yeah, so now what's gonna happen is when we refresh, um, we're printing our on the data that's been returned uh, and stored in that property. So we now have all of the data relating to my user account which is cool because then we can work with it in here to check passwords and things like that um, so now what we're going to do is back to the actual login function itself we're going to say if user because remember we're either returning true or false so if user um, what we're now going to do is check the password so we need another if statement we're going to say if this data password now hold on a minute where's this data method come from well it doesn't exist at the moment the only reason I have decided to do this is because use referencing this all the time is going to be a bit of a hassle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and create a private uh, method called data and that's basically just going to return this data lovely so um, if this data password equals hash make Remember, we already have our hash functionality, password. And remember, we pass in a salt as well to this hash uh, method. So hash make string and salt, and that will return us with a hash. So we're basically reversing what we did when we registered a user. Um, and then we're checking the hash against the one that's been generated here too. So we're going to say this data salt. So we're grabbing the salt from the user account as well. Um, then uh, that basically means that the uh, passwords match. So if we echo... Uh, or let's yeah let's just echo okay so this isn't going to actually log us in or anything like that and we'll still get an error here but if I type in Alex and I don't know uh, password one login we, we get a login failed we'll get that the next time but don't let that throw you off I'm going to type in password now which is my correct password and then I get this okay message back because the passwords match so now that we know that this if statement works for valid passwords um, we can go ahead and set a user session so inside the um, session uh, class that we've already created we can use this to set a session um, and put a session um, for the user um, the user session that we want now um, because we've stored the session names inside of our uh, our initialization file in the config what we want to do is grab these and store these somewhere useful so I'm gonna say up here in the property list uh, or, or list of properties we're gonna have a session name here session name so inside of construct what I want to do is I want to say this session name equals config get 
And if we just take a look at how this is structured, so we can remember, so it will be session and session name. So session forward slash session underscore name. And yeah, so that's it. So we, we take the session, place it here so we can use it out, uh, throughout our application. Just saves us having to do config get every time we need to do that. Um, it's entirely up to you how this works. So we can now say, define the session name and we then want to put the specific data in and we're just going to store the user's ID in this case so we can use the data method now to place the ID in. So now we've actually put the session inside um, the, the ID, user's ID inside of this particular session um, and that's it, we've done, we've essentially logged the user in. So um, what we also um, might need to do well, in fact, what we do need to do is return true because we want to um, signify that this has been a successful login. So on the login page now, um, this is going to you know work better. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a console and we're going to keep an eye on uh, the local host um, uh, data here. So basically, if I were to type in Alex and um, like test or something, click login, um, this fails. So sorry, logging in failed. If I was to type Alex and password, which is my correct password and click login, um, this now says success. So what we've now done is we've successfully logged in. In fact, this won't actually show um, much, to be honest. Um, but we can go ahead and, and see how this has worked. We can we can prove that this has worked. So on, on um, index.php, let's go down here and we're going to say echo session get now this is only temporary uh, config get uh, session session name so that will echo that out to us and when I refresh um, on the index.php page we see four and that is in fact the ID of myself so we now know that that has been set by the login functionality now, what happens if we want to check if a user is actually logged in? Well, that's an entirely different story because what we need to do is in the constructor, every time, well, when we construct um, or, or instantiate a new object, we want to go ahead and check if the session exists and then return whether we're logged in or not. Um, so we'll be looking at that in the next part.